why the transfer pricing regulations introduced in a number of countries to avoid shifting a profit from one jurisdiction to another jurisdiction. Now, when we talk about uh, transfer pricing regulation, why there's a need of transfer pricing regulations, the one is the avoiding shifting of profit. There are another areas of transfer pricing regulation, which is substance. So transfer pricing is not only to be seen as a compliance subject, it is a subject where we need to see the substance of the transaction. It is a subject where negotiation is also involved. And one of the areas of the transfer pricing where, which is overlooked is the negotiations because you, you can compute the arm's length price, you can maintain transfer pricing documentation. Unless you have the sufficient negotiation skills, it is very difficult to justify the same before the tax authority. And such negotiations should be within the framework of the arm's length principle. So the point why I'm making here is that transfer pricing is not only to be seen as a compliance subject. It's a, it's a subject of boardroom discussion because there's a significant level of risk involved uh, and one need to see the entire arrangement and uh, not only see that the, we need to compute the arm's length price and do the compliance, that's it. And I want to give a very interesting example. A few days back, I was uh, discussing with one of the taxpayer where he was saying to me that there's a charge which is to be made from Bahrain to UAE for any use of the software. And he said that, why should I you know, do that charge? Because there's no tax in Bahrain. And uh, in UAE, this is a payment from UAE. So anyway, uh, if they don't pay, there's, there will not be any tax uh, erosion, based erosion from UAE. Now that's the issue. Transfer pricing is not to be structured from only from a tax perspective. Tomorrow, if Bahrain introduces transfer pricing regulations. There might be issue from a transfer pricing perspective. And one need to see the transfer pricing on a holistic basis, uh, not only from a tax perspective, but business perspective as well. When number of countries introduce the transfer pricing regulations, it is not only the that the their objective of avoiding the base erosion has met, it is also that the multinational enterprises significantly improved their internal transfer pricing processes. And I'll come to that when we discuss the more bit about operational transfer pricing. Moving on to, uh, this is the overall transfer pricing cycle that we need to identify the related party transactions, function analysis, then we perform the economic analysis using the different methods, benchmarking analysis, and then transfer pricing documentation and compliance. This is a very general cycle of how we follow to meet the compliance of any country. But in this cycle, there are significant other issues because transfer pricing is same for every industry. So when I, when I talk about the real estate and oil and gas industry, it is not different. The fundamentals are the same, but it works differently for each and every industry uh, because the policies and the maintenance of the data and the documentation and the approach followed by the, each country in terms of their uh, uh, managing the overall arrangement is different. And when you find different sort of data, different sort of challenges, your approach to transfer pricing also changes, provided it is within the framework of the transfer pricing regulations and the arm's length standard. So this is a general, uh, this is the overall cycle of the transfer pricing, where how we deal with the transfer pricing uh, compliance. Uh, applicability of the transfer pricing regulations in UE, as I mentioned, I'll quickly go through these, uh, these provisions of UE. I'll not go much into the regulations, but it is when we talk about oil and gas and real estate industry, it is very, very important to talk about to whom it is, to whom the this transfer pricing regulations are applicable. The first and foremost is associated person. So transfer pricing regulations are applicable to associated person, which means natural person and the juridical person. Transfer pricing regulations are applicable for transaction and arrangement between two related party and connect or also connected person. Now it is very important to understand that it is not only the transactions. They, if there is an arrangement also, then also the transfer pricing regulations are applicable. Uh, so for example, you have significant amount of receivable in your books of accounts and there is no clear cut transactions uh, for notional interest. So that is kind of an arrangement, notional arrangement. So there can be various different arrangements. So that's the reason when we evaluate the related party relationship in the financial, we not only see the what is disclosed in the financial, but also see the overall arrangement, vendor contract. There might be significant influence between the two third parties. 
So this is to be seen from a holistic perspective. And then there is a connected person. Any payment made to the connected person justified from an arm's length perspective to be, it is to be evaluated whether the payments are wholly and exclusively for the business operations or not. Another point is that the question comes that where the transfer pricing regulations to whom the it is it is applicable to all the entities, whether it is uh, entities claiming small business relief or exempted entity or qualified uh, free zone persons, it is applicable to all the entities. The arms when I say transfer pricing regulation means the arms length principle. So if you are tra transaction uh, if you have a transaction between two free zone entity, it is applicable. If you have a transaction. If any small uh, any entity claiming small business relief, it is entering into transaction another entity. Transfer pricing regulations are applicable, so it is applicable to all the entities. Amson principle. The question is, transfer pricing documentation may or may not applicable to all the entities. So transfer pricing documentation, there is a specified threshold. If you meet that threshold, then it is applicable. But there is a if you are if you are an exempted entity or entities claiming is small business relief, then the transfer pricing documentation, when I say documentation means local file and master file not applicable, but in a way for any transaction, any amount of transaction, you need to maintain minimum required documentation to justify the arm's length price, uh, irrespective of whether you are meeting threshold or not. If you are meeting the threshold, you need to prepare the local file and master file. If you are not, there should be a minimum sufficient documentation to justify the arms and price. So it is very important to understand this concept that it is applicable to uh, that natural and juridical person arrangement and transactions and applicable to all the entities, irrespective of whether it is small, uh, uh, claiming small business relief or exempted entities. Uh, I'll not go into this related party definition. It is very broad, but just summarizing a very quick way that there are three, I, I can categorize the regulations in the three categories. One is the related party relationship through ownership, shareholding percentage, it's related party relationship through control. Uh, so even if there is a less than 50% of the shareholding, if there's a control exist from one entity to another entity, then also two entity becomes related party. Giving a quick example that if one entity owning just 30%, but that entity is basically managing the entire operations, key decisions of the another entity, both entities become related party. If one entity, uh, there are two third parties, if one entity is providing technology to another entity and both the entities uh, have an ag arrangement that they will share the profitability and if one entity is entitled to more than 50% of the profit, then also becomes related party. So there are different provisions. One is the ownership, another is the control. And the third one comes is, connected person so this is very important that uh, the connected person is not there in if you find you will not find this in the transfer pricing regulations of the other uh, other countries the reason being ue does not have uh, in the individual taxation so there's always a possibility uh, to shift profit from juridical person to the individual person and any such payment made if it is a wholly and exclusively for the business operation and if it is arm's length, then there is no issue. But if it is excessive, now how you determine excessive? So let's say you're paying salaries or managerial remunerations uh, uh, or to, to your key person or managing director or your owner or relative of those person, then that is to be seen whether it is excessive or not. There can be, we can see the parameter or some report published externally. <laughs> and also if it is the, the payment is excessive as compared to the uh, industry, then it is very important to substantiate the payment based on the function performed by that key person. Because sometimes what happens is the salary or remuneration is very excessive. And how to justify the same when there is no benchmark available. So that can be justified with the documenting the functions. If the CEO is performing critical functions in a company, that critical functions can help justifying that the salary or remuneration is at arm's length. So similarly, so any payment made to the owner or director or relative of director owner uh, or that, pay, that payment needs to be seen from an arm's length perspective. So there are, when we determine the arm's length price, there are two, three categories, ownership, control, and the connected person. So as we are focusing on the real estate and uh, oil and gas industry, I'll not talk more in the, to this part, but the objective is that 
when we evaluate the related party relationship, it is very, very important to see not only the financial, but different arrangements, board minutes, uh, payments to the related parties, uh, uh, related parties of the key persons. Then only we would be able to identify the relationship and meet the compliance required as per the UAE transfer pricing regulations. Now, before going into the real uh, oil and gas and real estate industry, it is very important to talk about the fundamentals of the transfer pricing. Because as I mentioned earlier, transfer pricing is not different for different industries. If you talk about pharma industry, if you talk about uh, real estate, the transfer pricing remains the same, the fundamental remains the same, that the transaction between the two related parties needs to be at arm's length. When I say arm's length, means as if the transaction happened between the two unrelated parties so that we can ensure that there is no profit shifting. So this is the key fundamental. Now, around that we can discuss for industry specific. Why? Because as I mentioned, transfer pricing is same, but the industry, every industry works differently. The data is managed differently. The arrangement entered differently. So say for an example, you will, in, in most of the oil and gas industry exploration arrangement, there's a joint venture arrangement. In real estate industry, there is a different value chain of construction and development. So how we, in the entire complex value chain, how we determine the, the profitability of each entity. So transfer rising fundamentally remains the same, but it works differently for different industry. So as I mentioned, arm's length principles to be applicable, comparability analysis. So we need to, when we talk about the oil and gas and real estate industry, the or any other industry, comparability analysis is the key. When I say comparability analysis, if you are, let's say, ac acquiring a real estate uh, or a building, we need to see how we find the comparable price. Uh, and that price can be determined in different ways. You can compare with the uh, similar property. You can compare with the any other uh, property and making some adjustment. If you are comparing the royalty, in oil and gas industry, where exploration, development, a lot of R&D is performed, you need to compare with the royalty with other comparable entities. So there are different ways of performing comparability analysis within the framework of the law. We apply different methods. And from that method, we determine the arm's length pricing. So talking about the comparability analysis, uh, different transaction of different uh, methodology, but the fundamental is, if you, there are three ways of generally we follow price to price comparison. So I was taking an example of the real estate industry. You will compare the price of a land to another price of a land, which is uh, the pricing is there in the third party scenario. You will, if you are paying royalty in an oil and gas scenario, you will compare with the other pricing of royalty. Suppose we don't have the pricing, the direct pricing. We need to see the profitability at a net level. Then we will see the profitability of the third party companies. Suppose we don't have the pricing and we don't have the profitability. We need to see the arrangement, how we can get the comparability analysis done. Then there are different arrangements where two entities are jointly develop something. So let's say, for example, two entities are jointly come together and do exploration activity or two entities jointly come together, do the development and construction activity. Then we need to see the profit split method, the how we can apply the profit split. So there are different ways and means. So I am I will not discuss the, each and every method here. So as I mentioned, we'll discuss more on fundamental and industry specific. But if we focus on the fundamentals of the transfer pricing in any industry, transfer pricing can be simplified, not only from a compliance perspective, but also from an internal efficiency perspective. Okay, so fundam focusing on the fundamental is very important that your transaction needs to be at arm's length. You need to follow the arm's length, you need to follow the comparability method to determine the arm's length price, find the similar transaction in an uncontrolled scenario. The third point comes, which is very, very important, and which is overlooked as I was taking the example of uh, transaction between uh, UAE and uh, Bahrain. Bahrain, there is no corporate tax. The third point is substance. Now, when we talk about the transfer pricing, regulations. It is not only about the compliance. It is not only about the computation of arm's length price. Substance plays a very, very important role. And that's the reason if you really see, even after introduction of the transfer pricing regulations, OECD had to introduce the BAPS action plan because somewhere, you know, 
down the line, OECD realized that just arm's length principle does not help. Even the transaction is at arm's length, there's going to be base erosion happening because the substance is not there in the transaction. So say, for example, I am, as an entity, uh, oil and gas entity, I am a subsidiary company paying royalty to my head office or parent company for the use of that technology, which help in drilling or might be exploration. I'm, I keep paying royalty, okay, uh, without uh, any getting any substance benefit or benefit test. And I keep justifying that the royalty is at arm's length. Now, what happens is after three, four, five years, six years, 10 years, tax authority, even after looking at your transfer rising documentation, may challenge that your royalty is arm's length, but where is the evidence of benefit test? So it is very, very important that whenever there is a payment, let's say for like kind of a royalty, where is the substance? Um, if there's an intra group services being availed. So say for example, I'm a real estate development company and I have a company, uh, let's say in India, providing low value adding or kind of a support services. And I'm making payment to the Indian entity for all accounting, payroll and everything. Now what happens is there's nothing wrong in making payment for intergroup services. But the point here is that it is very important to document the substance evidence that you have actually achieved benefit. So say for example, in the development company, the real estate development company based in UAE, it has hired for accounting, payroll, and other activities. Then the tax authority challenged that if you have people already in the UAE, why you are making payment to Indian entity? It's a duplication. So I'm going to disallow even if you were justify the transaction arm's length. So whenever we deal any transaction from an arm's length perspective, it is not only the computation of the arm's length price. It is very, very important to have the substance in place substance of benefit, substance that there are people involved in uh, that transaction. So say, for example, a drilling, an entity providing drilling services to uh, another entity and un taking most of the profit from that operations. Now, it is very important to document that there are skilled people involved in that activity, their qualifications. So that is very, very important. Then only be the allocation is appropriate from an arm's length perspective. So substance is very, very important. And that's the reason I keep saying, never see transfer pricing from a compliance perspective. The moment we see the transfer pricing from a compliance perspective, we, we may lose out the most important part and there may be risk from a transfer pricing perspective, uh, which, which can be, which uh, you may face in the subsequent or in a future period when tax authorities see your entire transaction. So transfer pricing is to be seen holistically. And that's the reason uh, corporate tax is different. Transfer pricing is different. And it is very, very important to see the transfer pricing based on the why the transfer pricing is introduced and not from just from a tax perspective. The moment you see transfer pricing from a tax perspective, it is always it is possible that you will save tax, but from a substance perspective, from a long-term corporate governance perspective, there might be an issue. So this is important. Another point is documentation requirement. So whatever the transaction you are entering, whether you're oil and gas industry or you are a real estate in, uh, industry, documentation, maintaining documentation is very, very important that if you have a unique transaction, say for example, in real estate industry, you are selling a very luxury villa or something which is very unique you will not find a comparable villa a price of the transaction now what you can do if you don't have comparable similar price what you need to do you need to maintain the documentation which shows that this is the actual price of that villa or the uh, uh, the that property which which can substantiate before the tax authority that this is the price and irrespective of the fact that there is no comparable, the price we have determined based on the valuation or based on some other uh, factors pre uh, prevailing in the market. So which is very, very important. That's maintaining the documentation. Uh, risk management, identifying and manage transfer pricing risk. As I mentioned, transfer pricing to be seen from a holistic perspective. And they, even if you compute the arm's length price, even if you maintain transfer pricing documentation, there can always be a risk. Say, for example, risk of a permanent establishment. Uh, there can be risk on account of losses. And I'm taking an example. If an entity is a loss entity, incurring significant losses, 
but the related party transaction is just 5% of the entity and 95% is the third party transaction. Now you will realize that, okay, why I should maintain transfer by why I should do the risk management. This is very important that if you have a losses, even if your related party transaction is 5%, tax authority is going to look into your entire entity and you need to maintain the, you need to manage the risk. It is very important that manage the risk by identifying the transactions the, by identifying that the related parties and the third parties are different and maintaining the segment, maintaining the relevant documentation, which supports that the uh, losses are not account of the transfer pricing. So risk management is very important and risk should be managed not at the time of the compliance, but it is a ongoing activity at the very beginning of the when the transaction is happened or even before that, that how the transfer pricing is planned. Uh, global alignment, it is very, very important because sometimes what happens is globally the policy is different and locally it is, it is uh, the, the, the overall parameters, overall policies form or apply differently. And that's happened, uh, I've seen in oil and gas industry where contract talks about something and the conduct is different. So it is very, very important that global alignment in your documentation, your local file and master file needs to be aligned so that... Uh, there is no issue from a transfer pricing perspective. And the last but not least are dispute resolutions that always be prepared for dispute resolution, not when the dispute arises, but at the very beginning when the transaction took place to see from a holistic perspective, risk management, transfer pricing documentation, transfer pricing policy. So with this background, we will move on to the uh, slides related to the oil and gas industry. Now we will discuss what is the value chain analysis. Now, when we talk about any industry, value chain analysis is very important. We have seen, we have uh, seen the functional analysis, okay, in transfer pricing documentation is talking about the function as such a risk related to intercompany transaction. But value chain analysis is a more broader concept, basically looking into the value of the entire activity from, and breaking it down from primary activity to support activity. Primary activity can be, uh, can be your uh, logistics operation, outbound, lo outbound logistics, marketing and sales. And then there are support activities, there are procurement, IT, HR. So, 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 you know, when we look into this, when we specifically talk about oil and gas and real estate industry, this, you know, value chain analysis helps a lot because not only from a transfer pricing perspective, but also from a business perspective, because when you have, when we have the idea of that, which activity is valuing how much, which activity is contributing a lot, you would be able to identify where you need to make changes, where you need to do restructuring, where you need to shift people. And this is something which is uh, important. I'm not saying that this is important for documenting in the transferring study report, but when we talk about industries like oil and gas and real estate, this valuation analysis helps to make sure that transaction, the entities are getting compensated based on their con contribution. And there's a, in, a, in the system, the changes are can be made based on the value chain and the profit driver of each activity. So I'm going to have a different program on value chain analysis, which is a very broad concept for each industry. But since we are talking about the oil and gas value chain, and that's the reason I was talking about where the value is being created, who are responsible people and how the compensation should flow on. Uh, before that, you know, this is just a snapshot uh, of the oil and gas industry. You know, I'm not going to discuss UAEs among the world's top oil and gas uh, producer, not only in oil, but also in gas. And uh, Abu Dhabi holds 96% of the oil, UAE's oil reserve. But the objective is to talk about the value chain of oil and gas industry. Uh, before that, uh, I think uh, many of you are aware that exploration activities are exempted from the UAE corporate tax. But as I mentioned, even any activity is exempted, your transfer pricing uh, regulation still applicable. So if there's a transaction between two entities, if they are exempted, like exploration activities, the transfer pricing regulation, the arm's length price still need to be determined from an um, uh, the, from a UAE transfer pricing perspective. Uh, so let's talk about the value chain of the oil and gas industry. So if you see on the screen, the value chain 
looks like complex, but it is not that complex. It is divided into upstream, midstream, and downstream. Those who are on this uh, webinar attending uh, into oil and gas, they are uh, they are they are they are expert in that, and uh, I don't need to explain that much. But those who are new to this industry, it is very important to uh, understand that they start with the upstream with lease access, so identifying the place where the this exploration start. Then we start with the explorations. Uh, uh, exploration is drilling activity. Now, exploration before uh, doing the exploration, it is they do the seismic surveys and identify the place to find there's a hydro hydrocarbon reserve available, and then start the development, actual drilling for oil and gas. And in between, there can be research and development because R and D is required. But things are changing now. Ten years before ago, the exploration would. Uh, was different. Now there's a use of technology. AI might be in the exploration activity. So it start with the exploration, then development, and then comes to the production, which resulted into natural gas and crude oil. Now, when it comes to the gas, gas is processed and it is uh, liquefied because when you do the transportation, it can be done only in a liquid format. And that's where the midstream comes. So once the crude oil and gas is identified, uh, explored, then there's a trading transportation to for refining for through ship or pipeline and similarly transportation uh, for gas and there come the refining uh, happening for resulting for other products let's say fuel jet fuel lubricant and similarly petrochemical product again the lng which is liquefied again converted into the gas format to reach out to the end consumer. Now, this is the value chain. And those who are into oil and gas industry, they will know, you know in very detail that how complex uh, it is uh, from an operational perspective. When, but when we talk about from a transfer pricing perspective, in each uh, stream, upstream, midstream, and downstream, there are different related party transactions. And we need to deal with the fundamentals of the transfer pricing as I explained in the beginning that whatever the industry, Following the fundamental is very, very important. Now, value chain analysis, uh, as I mentioned, I have summarized the upstream, midstream, and downstream, the process and the outcome, which are the products coming, uh, resulting from this process. So production, if I talk about production, crude oil, natural gas, transportation is done for crude oil, LNG, refining. So refining where different products are result out of the refining process and also mention the uses. I'm not going to discuss in detail because uh, this is more on an operational perspective. I'll fo now focus more on transfer pricing that in oil and gas industry, when we talk about the value chain, when we talk about the different uh, activities, which are the transaction and how we determine the arm's length price of those transaction. So when we talk about the real estate industry, there are different structures. Okay, so every industry has a different structure. Pharma industry, there are distribution, there's a contract manufacturing, there's a toll manufacturing, FMCG, if you see different structure, uh, there is a distributor, there is a licensed entrepreneur model, there is a shared services. Similarly, in oil and gas industry, there are different structure which are supporting the entire oil and gas industry. So one of the su such structure is the trading hub. So entity is basically helping the entire group for trading activities. Uh, basically coordinating with the procurement entity and buying and supplying uh, of, of uh, commodities, taking into the local tax advantages. Now, this trading hub, if I talk about from transfer pricing perspective, is like any other entity, like, okay, uh, from a transfer pricing perspective. The fundamental is the substance. If there is a trading hub for oil and gas entity, do they have enough substance? When I say substance, if they are let's say uh, getting 30% of the profit, I'm taking hypothetical example, do, do they have substance or 20% of the profit? Do they have substance uh, to justify that much of profit? When I say substance, do they have skilled people who are working on this, those activities, whether they are taking critical decisions? So from that perspective, it is very important to do the function assessment analysis or might be a value chain analysis to understand who is contributing what in the value chain. So trading hub, is very important in the entire value chain of the oil and gas industry because they help in uh, supplying the oil and gas to another entities. The second is the procurement hub. Now, when we talk about the, any industry, whether it is pharmaceutical or FMCG, generally you 
is a centralized procurement entity basically dealing with the vendors and uh, coordinating with other vendors to make sure the activities are streamlined and there's a lot of efficiencies in the system. So when we talk about the procurement activity uh, of oil and gas industry, they perform a lot of activities, not only volume aggregation, but also like product testing, engineering, uh, and other some technical services. Now, procurement services, the question comes, how to compensate this procurement hub? Now, there's no one answer I can give. There are different models for different activities. If any entity is basically significantly involved in negotiation with the vendors, taking independent decisions, there might be commission on revenue. If the, any entity just procure, providing procurement support, nothing else, no decision making, no then cost plus model. So there are different models for different nature of activities. It is very important to see what kind of services are being rendered for by these procurement hub and what kind of risks they are uh, undertaking from a value chain perspective. Once we identify these activities, it is uh, uh, easy to find out what kind of model can be uh, adopted and what kind of benchmarking to be performed for the computing the arm's length price. So one is the trading and the second is the procurement. Another support, the, the value chain in the oil and gas industry is intra-group services. Now, you will find these intergroup services in any other industry as well. Say, for example, uh, in Philippines or in Singapore, there are a lot of shared support center. They're providing accounting, payroll, and uh, other support services to another group entities based in the other countries. Uh, this is very common, but it is very important, as I mentioned, substance that why you're availing the services. Is there any benefit? Is, there should not be any duplication. So when we talk about the intra-group support, support services, there can be technical services like engineering, environmental safety, project management, logistics. There can be engineering consulting. So it is very, very important to analyze that what kind of intra-group services. Are they very routine in nature, like administrative accounting payroll? Then there, there is a there is a concept in the OECD transfer pricing guideline of low value adding services where OECD has recommended 5% markup. But I mean, it is not appropriate to charge 5% markup for a technical support services, uh, for a uh, basically logistics services, which are high end in the natural engineering services. So it is very, very important to bifurcate what the nature of services, what the risk, uh, whether it is it is just a support service or are there is there any risk being undertaken by the entity? Now, one of the important point I would like to discuss in the intra-group support service is the oil and uh, the shareholding services. So suppose in oil and gas industry, one entity is performing uh, services for the entire group for environmental safety to check that the whether environment uh, safety standard are met or not, or one entity providing to all other entities. Now, this is this may not be the intra-group services. This may come under the shareholding services because it is uh, rendered for the entire group and not directly benefiting one entity and the expenses incurred by the group uh, at a group level. Another, like any board meeting or group level activity where expenses are incurred, shareholding activity. So when we talk about intra-group services, it is important to understand that the services has to be uh, this should be uh, this should be benefit from those services if payment is made uh, in, enough documentation is maintained there is no duplication you have people here and you are also availing the services and sufficient documentation to be maintained for those kind of intergroup services another structure is vessel and rig charter so rig charter is basically leasing offshore equipment to activities like construction services and drilling so there is one entity providing rig charter now these charter often related companies you know facing some chart transfer pricing challenges and they lease out the equipment now what happens is there could be a permanent establishment issue so one entity is providing the rig and they they are set up they have set up themselves in in, a, in another country area where they are, they are basically setting up a business or on behalf of the main parent entity and fixed place of business. And there could be a permanent establishment issue from that perspective. So it is very, very important when we talk about the oil and gas industry to see the overall activity performed by that entity, whether it is creating a permanent establishment, because once it is a permanent establishment, it may face tax issues in another country and the profit will be attributed based on the arm's length principle. So this is an, another structure. Uh, financing is not kind of a structure, but it is very, uh, very, very important. In industry like real estate and oil and gas, so since we are talking about oil and gas, uh, it is very, very capital intensive 
funding plays a very very important role uh, and there are special purpose vehicle doing the funding arrangement uh, there are companies doing cash pooling uh, in the entire system so very very important the how funding arrangements are placed uh, how the arms length price is determined uh, based on the arms length principal credit rating of the borrower uh, and what kind of adjustment is being performed while doing the benchmarking for arms length interest uh, the terms of the loan and also the guarantee which is very very important uh, especially, especially in this industry performance guarantee where uh, basically one entity is basically giving guarantee to another third party uh, for in on behalf of uh, for the other group entity for performance of any contract so performance guarantee is another point which one need to see there are different ways of computing the arms length price so this is the overall on financing but as i said uh, it's a very wide topic in fact for both these topics real estate and oil and gas there can be one day complete sessions on transfer pricing but since we have lack of time we i'm quickly going through the, each of the issues in detail uh, the, the there are different transactions i licensing of the exploration rights and joint venture agreement uh, when we talk about the oil and gas industry licensing of exploration right means the one entity is providing license royalty so it is to be seen from an arms length perspective looking how much royalty the other entity is paying when it comes to the exploration provision of technical services again this is like any other technical services need to see how much markup we need to add by determining the arms length price sale of crude oil now this is a very wide topic sale of crude oil because there are different benchmark wit brand or you know available local benchmark available for determining the arms length price of crude oil so i'm not going to discuss in detail because but there are this is a very wide topic sale of crude oil because there are hedging arrangements uh, one need to see the bench one need to do the adjustment in the pricing say for example uh, quality adjustment in uae there is not much sulfur in the oil uh, so uae uh, may charge higher premium to related party because of the sulfur but in comparable such things are not available so you need to do the volume adjustment freight adjustment so when we do any transfer pricing analysis it is very very important to see the apple to apple comparison but if there is no apple to apple and the app category of the apple is different it is always possible and within the framework of the law that adjustment can be performed in the in the transaction let's say in oil and gas we can do the adjustment from one uh, if if the two transactions are not exactly comparable provision of drilling services again drilling services there can be two options one is finding the comparable rate in the third party scenario uh, there are different quotation available or you do the benchmarking and see the how much other drilling companies are charging as a net profit so as i said you can have either price to price comparison or you see the profitability and see the comparable based on the databases available in the market another area is transportation services between between a, transportation is a very very important area of oil and gas industry because that's how there's a pillar of the oil and gas industry and uh, any transportation uh, transaction between two related party to be seen uh, i it can be per barrel or per mile basis depend upon the nature of the arrangement but it is important to see the comparable arrangement if we have the data of the comparable in a third party scenario or we need to see the databases of the comparable companies leasing of storage facility uh, based on the comparable leases of the similar capacity similar location we need to do the comparison sale of finished product to distributor and retailer again when we talk about the oil and gas industry there are different products finished products uh, petrochemical product we need to see the market conditions situations comparable data available for that products and as i mentioned adjustment need to be performed if the products are not comparable or if we have looking at the profitability uh, some other uh, another adjustment can be performed like working capital adjustment last but not the least the licensing of the brand and technology so this is important in the oil and gas industry where a lot of r and d is performed if one entity is paying technology it is very very important that they Uh, document the entire transaction uh, and the benefit availing by the paying payment of the royalty from an arms length perspective uh, and they cannot continue to pay royalty without justifying the substance so this is very very important royalty rates can be find in the can be found out in the external uh, third party databases uh, another important point is when we talk about the royalty specifically when there are losses it is very very important to see the losses royalty it is not it is not necessary that a company is incurring losses it cannot pay royalty but 
tax authority might challenge it. So it is very, very important to make sure that royalty is for the benefit, overall benefit of the entity uh, from a future perspective. So, uh, so this is on, on brand and uh, royalty. Royalty can be different brand and technology, and it can be bundled also. So accordingly, the treatment of the uh, can be done from a transfer pricing perspective. Uh, so there are different challenges when we talk about the oil and gas industry. Let's say I spoke about the permanent establishment issue that you need to see whether that entity is basically operating as a fixed place of business for another entity on, and concluding operating on behalf of another entity, then can be attribution of the profit and taxability in the other country. Shareholding services, we already spoken that it should be intra-group services. Cost contribution arrangement. So there is a two entity jointly come and do some work for oil and gas industry. Then that arrangement to be seen from an arm's length perspective, looking into the function assets and risk, looking into the contribution, just because it's a cost contribution arrangement, we cannot just allocate the cost based on like some odd percentage. We have to see the function assets and risk and their contribution. And based on the contribution, even if the project is into loss, we need to see the, we, we don't need to see the results, but also but the contribution made by the entities. Valuation of intangibles. Uh, this is again a very, very important area when it comes to the oil and gas industry. There are different uh, intangibles, uh, proprietary technology being developed by the entity. Just because the entity is performing R&D doesn't mean it is owning the intangible. It depends upon who is taking the risk, who is contributing in development of the industry, who is providing the support for that technology. So based on the same, it is to be identified whether there is an intangible being, being generated in the entire arrangement. Uh, and then accordingly is to be valued based on uh, the arm's length principle. Then there are financing and treasury activity, you know, complex finance arrangements, loans and guarantees to be seen holistically uh, based on the arm's length principle. So uh, this is all from oil and gas industry. We'll move on to uh, uh, the, the real estate industry because we have a lack of time. So I'll touch upon, quickly touch upon the operational transfer pricing issue in the oil and gas industry. So when we talk about the any industry, there are two things. One is managing transfer pricing from a compliance perspective. And that is, we all know we are managing day in day out. But there is, there is a, another area of operational transfer pricing, which is overlooked and a lot of, uh, and lot of challenges in faced, being faced by the multinational companies, especially in terms of managing the data. And that's where operational transfer pricing comes into the picture, which says, uh, which is basically managing the transfer pricing once the policy is set. The once the policy is set, data is flowing internally. Whether the policy is is cost plus ten percent, whether it is actually implemented in the system, whether cost is kept captured properly, whether data is manual. If it is manual, we need to make sure that it is uh, there is no errors. Is there any significant year-end transfer pricing adjustment? Uh, whether invoicing is manual, automated. See, these are all administrative things, but very, very significant from a transfer pricing perspective because it may have significant impact. If you, let's say, consider extraordinary cost uh, while computing the markup on the cost, particular cost support services, uh, that may give different results. So it is very, very important to see how the data is managed, especially uh, uh, once the policy is set, if the SAP is, system is followed, whether SAP system can be automated. And especially in the oil and gas industry, where are different parties involved in the transaction, how to allocate the cost between each of these entities, that is very, very important. And that's where a lot of challenges being faced in managing the data. So the solution is that managing the standard process using the technology, when I say technology can be uh, automated uh, tools like Alteryx, or focusing specifically on uh, transfer price, related party transactions and understanding the level three processing of the each transaction, who is responsible and identifying that where this process should go now. If this process requires internal approval and this requires only one person, why there's a need of four person for different approval? And that's where you know I would wanted to focus on this area as well, that operational transfer pricing is very, very important it not only have a result into a, a efficient transfer pricing mechanism from a tax perspective, but also improve the internal efficiencies and the profitability. Uh, because you will come to know the entire process from an efficiency perspective when you talk about transfer pricing. Because that's what I have seen in my experience that uh, 
there are a lot of issues internally when we when come to managing the data from a transfer pricing perspective. If that area is focused, it is it it reduces the work a lot and it increases the efficiency to a greater extent. So this is all on uh, operational transfer pricing when we talk about it. it's applicable to all the industries, be it oil and gas or real estate. Oil and gas being more, very complex, different entities involved in different transaction, uh, different calculations involved. So the focus should be on operational transfer pricing as well. Uh, so this is on the strategy and way forward for oil and gas industry that integrate operational and financial data. There should be a correlation between the operation uh, the tax team and the finance team robust transfer pricing documentation to be maintained for each substance is very important just because what is written in the agreement should not represent the actual uh, conduct the conduct should be different from the contract uh, saying for example that one entity is basically providing crude to european entity but in the actual con conduct the, that a european entity directly supplying to customers so that may have implications so this is to be seen from a contract and conduct comprehensive transfer pricing as risk assessment framework right from the very beginning when the transfer pricing uh, when the transaction is entered optimizing transfer pricing for intangible looking into the functions assets and risk and contribution of the each and every entity and strong coordination so you know these are the very practical aspect how the transfer pricing can be managed and if you see each of these points, I have not spoken about tax impact and everything. These are very, very practical aspects from a corporate governance perspective. If you follow the fundamental, the tax tax expect will uh, will be taken care of because once you are on the fundamentals of the transfer pricing, you know it it, it covers up the entire you know arrangement. This is on the oil and gas industry uh, because we have a we don't have that much of time. Uh, we have discussed the issues of. Uh, some of the issues quickly, but we can have a detailed seminar or webinar on this industry, very complex, and there are a number of practical and other issues for each of these transactions. I can speak about it, but given the lack of time, I'll move on to the real estate industry, uh, which is which is one of the most important industries in the in the UAE and booming from last couple of years and taking different initiatives as well sustainable and blockchain as well integration with the tourism and retail so it is very important to see this industry or understand the issues of this industry from a transfer pricing perspective now when we talk about the real estate industry uh, there are uh, the real estate industry if we talk about the residential and land property transaction these are in the list of excluded activities when we talk about the qualifying free zone uh, person of qualifying activities. So this is a it, since residential and land and property transaction is under non-qualifying property. It is very important to see the entire arrangement and any entity basically whether it is doing business for mixed uh, or residential or commercial. Because when we do the transfer pricing analysis, we always need to allocate uh, the expense based on the nature of activity, nature of the transactions. So if uh, free zone activity, uh, if an entity based in free zone and the commercial, then it can get exemption, but still transfer pricing is applicable. So I'll not go into much of detail uh, because my focus in transfer pricing, but it is very, very important that even if you are into exempted or excluded activity, uh, exempted activity, commercial, uh, so transfer pricing is still applicable, but we need to see the various scenarios between commercial and residential, free zone to non-free zone, uh, free zone to the other non-qualifying activities. So based on the various scenario, you need to see there's a possibility of structuring this transaction from a transfer pricing perspective. Okay? So this is just to give an idea that uh, this is the provisions. Now, if we talk about the real estate industry value chain, start with the property development, then constructions. So there's a development and there's a construction. There can be one entity performing both the activities. The proper development include the purchasing of land through construction, often selling and leasing to the leasing the finished property, also financing arrangement. Then it comes to the construction activities, actual building of the structure, uh, residential, commercial, and infrastructure project. There's another layer is real estate investment trust, which are basically own operate and financial income product of the real estate industry. 
brokerage services, real estate brokers and agencies, uh, basically working on uh, arrangement between buyers and sellers, property management, property management services provided by the entity to another entity, leasing activities, real estate marketing consulting. So this is all, you know, different entities building the business of any real estate group, different entity have different role to play. There might be some activity jointly performing the role. When we talk about transfer pricing, it is very important to see which entity is performing what role. Accordingly, the transfer pricing arrangement to be seen. If any entity is providing just support, then cost the entity to be compensated on a cost plus basis. But if any entity jointly, let's say construction, one entity performing construction, another entity development, jointly working on a one project, and both entities taking risk and decisions, then that to be seen that whether profit can be split. But one entity is providing construction based on the guidance, instructions, and key decision making done by the property developer only, then the arrangement would be different. So that is the whole you know, crux of the transfer pricing. The one need to see the functions, assets, and risk. Otherwise, there is no separate transfer pricing regulations for the real estate industry. One need to see the structure and the arrangement. So I have listed down various stages of the real estate development, key activities. And the key related party transaction in each of the activities in the real estate industry, because there are different activity, land acquisition, design and development, uh, uh, then, then comes to construction, marketing, sales, property management. So each of the activities contributing to the entire value chain of the real estate industry and every activity to be seen differently, or if the activity performed jointly with another activity, need to do the function, need to see, see the function holistically. Now, there are different transactions. Uh, some of the transactions like services, we all know that we need to evaluate from a transfer pricing perspective by looking into the um, uh, pricing or profitability of the other, un, uh, other comparable companies. But there are some complex transactions. Let's say land acquisition. So if I am buying a new land, how to uh, determine the arms and price? Because land is every land is different or every property is different might be unique. So one way of doing is the basically doing the comparable uncontrolled price method. But again, the even the comparable data might be different from a transfer pricing perspective. Um, let's say if I am acquiring one property, another property, the comparable data I have in the same location, same type of building, but it's kind of a you know lit, uh, mix of residential and commercial. So what we need to do, we need to make some adjustment in the pricing. So if you see in the example, one, uh, Control transaction is commercial, the uncontrolled transaction, which the comparable transaction is a bit of residential. So we need to increase the price of the, the, uh, the, the basically the uncontrolled, the control transactions. Okay, so, uh, the, so, sorry, the uncontrolled transaction, because the uncontrolled transaction is residential. And in order to adjust, we need to adjust the same and make it uh, add the upward premium. So to make it uh, comparable to the uncontrolled transaction, then, if the entity, let's say, proximity to highway, near to highway, then again, it will have some more premium, uh, the residential one. So the, again, we will add 10% uh, premium for access. So it, in order to make it comparable, it is very important to make the relevant adjustment so that we will have apple to apple comparison. So this kind of complex transaction, we need to see, as I said, transfer pricing is not an exact science. It's an art. And when it is an art, art to be performed within the framework of the arm's length principle. And that art is helpful only when we have enough negotiation power, enough documentation to support that whatever we have documented is in line with the arms and principle and as per the facts of the case. So this is an example of acquisition. Another, uh, this is another case study basically using the DCF method in valuing the land. Uh, so we can also value a land. If we do not have comparable data, we can also use the discounted cash flow method based on that. Today, if I am making payment of a land, what future based on the future cash flow, what is the present value I should pay based on the discount rate, based on the terminal value? Because first two years there will be no uh, income, but after that, if the uh, life of the assets is twenty years, I should see the present value and then see the value of the property, and that could be their arms length price. So this is the another way of, because this, this can be unique transaction and it is not necessary for every transaction there can be a comparable. Then again comes to the financing. Uh, I'll not discuss because we are short of time, but you know, this presentation will be shared. Uh, the point is that uh, it is very important to justify the substance in financing also, just because you are 
you, you are just taking the loan you should not have too much of that in your balance sheet because there's a restrictions a thin capitalization rule if that comes then your interest or may be disallowed so it is very very important to do the credit capacity analysis do you have real credit capacity uh, and then only maintain the enough documentation that you have really need for the debt and you should not have too much of that as compared to the equity so that is very very important any financing transaction uh, uh, from a transferizing perspective another important transaction is performance guarantee as i mentioned performance guarantee is not lot not a lot of discussion being done even at a oecd I hope in the next paper of the oecd uh, we'll get to know more we'll get to Uh, learn more on the performance guarantee performance guarantee is common in real estate industry and even in oil and gas industry where one entity is providing guarantee to uh, uh, provide to the third party for the for the project which is performed by the another group entity and how to determine there are various ways and means internal comparable external comparable and third party data available so uh, you know this is very important to understand from a transfer pricing perspective now what are the challenges when we talk about transfer pricing in oil uh, real estate industry first is lack of benchmark data as i mentioned there are number of transaction unique nature in real estate industry like let's say a very luxury villa you will not find comparable lack of benchmark data so how to manage that that's kind of a challenge but there are ways and means as i mentioned transfer pricing is an art uh, not not exactly science but it is an art if you uh, provided that art is uh, followed within the framework of the arms length principle intangible valuation accurately valuing the ip of the development and management can be challenging who is contributing to the arrangement impact of the market cycle uh, market is very volatile when it comes to real estate industry so each time you need to see what is the pricing from a third party you, today if you determine that this is the pricing from a, a third party perspective two years down the line they could not be the same so it is very important to have that level of control tax tax risk and controversy uh, if some any entity following aggressive transfer pricing policy and just set the policy from a tax perspective there might be a challenge from a transfer pricing or substance perspective and then another is transfer pricing regulation different countries follow different transfer pricing regulations and each jurisdiction has its own uh, regulation so one need to see not only from a uae perspective but other countries perspective if there are transaction between two countries one country there might be a tax benefit uh, if the particular transfer pricing follows but there might be an issue from a other another country perspective where there is the, the tax authority might challenge that arrangement so this is very important from a uh, arms length perspective again uh, you know this is from a operational perspective similar similar to the oil and gas industry internal system procedures uh, we should avoid manual errors technology play can play a very big role in the transfer pricing operational transfer pricing and bringing efficiencies and streamlining the transfer pricing policies so yeah so uh, the way forward for this industry is maintain robust transfer pricing documentation to ensure that the documentation is comprehensive up to date and reflect the complexity of the arrangement substance is very important so if you are acquiring a land and if you are following the cup method if you are doing the adjustment you should maintain a detailed transfer pricing documentation even if uh, uh, suppose there is no third party comparable, uh, comparable available you are following dcf your documentation should justify the arms length price intercompany agreement so this is another very important area uh, i as i mentioned earlier that it is the conduct which important in transfer pricing and contract and conduct should match especially in uh, oil and gas and real estate industry there are there can be you will find that contract is something and there are conduct is different and this is not something uh, this is sometime it's a need of the r from an operational perspective but from a transfer pricing perspective it is very very important to see that contract and conduct is same uh, implement the market cycle adjustment regularly review the adjust transfer pricing uh, due to the volatility in this industry because the industry is volatile price keeps changing the price which you were using to, at the time of covid you will not use that price today because today the market is different for real estate industry standardized transfer pricing process it is very very important from an operational transfer pricing perspective that to have an standard process because many industries they don't have a standard process and uh, it becomes difficult at the time of audit transfer pricing audit to get the data so if you if one follow the standardized process 
a system internal to manage the transfer pricing once it is set by the tax team the life becomes easier uh, but it requires effort in terms of technology effort in terms of understanding the entire value chain and understanding entire activities from an operational perspective so uh, this is again a case study i'm not going to discuss uh, but uh, if you uh, if you, if you go through once you get this presentation you can be in touch with me and we can discuss this case study but this is all from an oil and gas and uh, real estate perspective uh, i know the time was short but i hope i was able to discuss various issues and transaction from an arms length perspective not only from an arms length but from a fundamental perspective i mean generally we always go through the regulations and provisions but this is the another aspect of transfer pricing equally or in fact more important 